they crash with the market. Gold and silver stocks are stocks. And in a market crash, uh, the tertiary assets, the most marginal assets, decrease the most. And there is no asset in the world more marginal <laughs> than a junior mining share. Stocks are stocks. I remember in the 1987 crash, gold and gold equities held up for precisely 24 hours. <laughs> and then they followed the market lower. Even gold uh, will be impacted, although gold will come back sooner. What happens in a crash is that the sell decision isn't made by the investor. It's made by the margin clerk. And the margin clerk doesn't care what you think about the relative value of your holdings are. They sell whatever has a bid. Gold has garnered a lot of attention in the last few weeks with its record-setting run. Since the end of February, gold is up nearly 7% and set an all-time record of $2,195 an ounce along the way. I've been arguing that silver is drastically underpriced given the supply and demand dynamics for quite a while. With gold setting up for an extended rally, silver could be poised for a record-setting launch of its own, and it just might steal gold spotlight. Anticipation of Federal Reserve rate cuts and worries about de-dollarization sparked the gold's recent bull rally. I've argued that this is just the opening act. The U.S. government isn't going to suddenly become fiscally responsible or more reserved in using the power of the dollar as a foreign policy tool, so de-dollarization will likely continue and accelerate. When the economy cracks, we all know what the Fed will do. It will run to the rescue. It will slash rates to zero. It will relaunch quantitative easing. It will unleash another tsunami of easy money. What is gold going to do then if this recent rally based on the hope of rate cuts was this big? The rally we'll see when the Fed actually delivers rate cuts far beyond what anybody today expects will likely send the price into orbit. Now we'll show you more clips, but first like and subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the video. I do agree that the US dollar is becoming a less important trade mechanism than it was. But its former market share was 100%. <laughs> and while we are doing our very best as a country to wreck our currency, uh, we're thus far unsuccessful. Because as idiotic as we are, we seem to be smarter than the foreigners. It is true that the Russians and the Saudis and the Persians and the Chinese and the Brazilians and the South Africans and all of these people are tired of being lectured by the morons in Washington. It is also true that the weaponization of the U.S. dollar has meant that increasingly people whose policies are at odds to American uh, policies want to find exchange mechanisms outside the U.S. dollar. My experience has, done, has been doing business internationally for 40 years. As much as they distrust us, they trust us more than they trust each other. And I would suspect that fears of, as an example, the BRICS currency uh, eclipsing the U.S. currency in my lifetime, I'm a very healthy 71-year-old, uh, are very, very, very overblown. The liquidity and the transparency and the depth of the U.S. dollar debt market uh, is so deep that my suspicion is whether other people like it or not, they're going to use it. Will the Russians occasionally uh, settle an oil and gas sale in Chinese renminbi? Yes, to the extent that they can turn around and spend that renminbi. Will the Russians acquire substantial amounts of renminbi uh, denominated debt? Or more importantly, will the Chinese add on very many 10-year ruble denominated notes? Almost certainly not. The increase that you've seen in the gold price in the absence of any retail buying <laughs> in Western Europe and North America is testimony to the fact that global central banks reacting to the weaponization of the U.S. dollar and not trusting each other on Monday to fulfill their obligations on Tuesday are seeing that they have no alternative, but to increase their gold holdings, both as a store of value and as a medium of exchange. If they succeed in establishing uh, central bank digital currencies, 
then there's no saving us. Uh, at least there's no saving us in a formal market. Uh, then the people who bought large quantities of junk silver <laughs> will have their revenge. <laughs> you, in that circumstance, won't be able to use a kilo bar because you won't be able to make change. The combination of a central bank digital currency with the social credit technology that the Chinese are employing today means that if the federal government didn't like the way that we speak, spoke in an interview or didn't like the drugs that we either bought or didn't buy, that they could in fact cancel our currency. And this is truly scary. Mercifully, and this will get us some more hate in the comment in the comment section, there are 400 million guns in private circulation in the United States. Uh, and I don't think in the near term that Congress has the currency, has the courage uh, to do a wealth transfer of the order of magnitude that would be suggested by a central bank digital currency. I'm taking no chances, as a matter of fact. When I go into a restaurant and tip a waiter or a waitress, I tip them in cash and I tell them, this is not a tip, which is taxable. This is a gift, which is non-taxable. You should report this if you believe that the level of service that you get from the government exceeds the price that you pay for it in tax. Otherwise, you should regard this as a gift. I spend cash at small businesses because I want small businesses to understand the importance of tax, uh, of tax and cash in their business. In other words, I'm actively engaged as a propagandist by my own action against central bank digital currencies and laterally taxation. According to Rick Rule, the surge in gold prices, despite a lack of retail buying in Western Europe and North America, speaks volumes. It reflects a broader trend of central banks diversifying away from the U.S. dollar amidst growing geopolitical tensions and the currency's increasing weaponization. This strategic pivot towards gold is not merely a hedge against inflation, but a fundamental shift towards viewing gold as both a store of value and a medium of exchange in an uncertain global financial landscape. The backdrop to this shift is a concerning picture of the U.S. financial health, where the national debt burgeons by a trillion dollars every hundred days, a pace unprecedented in history. Rule raises alarm bells about the unsustainable trajectory of U.S. fiscal policy, with potential solutions being as drastic as cutting benefits, renouncing debts, or triggering inflation to devalue the currency. The latter, according to Rule, seems the most probable path, albeit fraught with its own set of challenges. Now we'll show you the best clips. Remember to like, subscribe, and share to keep us motivated to do more videos. Liquidity-related uh, declines. There are no safe shelters. The investment categories that hold value recover the fastest. But in the immediate aftermath of a crash, there are no safe shelters, with the exception of cash. They've been patient for the last 12 years. They've been rewarded. Uh, I look back and I began to materially increase my own holdings uh, of gold in 1998, two years too quick. But if we go 2000 to 2024, we see a move in the gold price from $250 to $2,100. 8.6, 8.7% a year for 24 years. I would ask investors who complain about that, uh, to give their head a shake. Gold has done precisely what I asked it to do. It's maintained my purchasing power. So when the gentleman says he's being patient, I need to say, really? What were your expectations? <laughs> I, I'm not one of those who believes in any ongoing uh, multi-decade manipulation. I believe that uh, lower real and marginal gold and silver prices over 40 years had more to do with the strength of the U.S. dollar and the perception, at least, that savers were enjoying real interest yields on U.S. dollar denominated deposits than anything else. Why would you bother manipulating something that was going lower? Uh, you know, why would you try to suppress something that was falling of its own volition? Uh, I believe that the outlook changed in 2022. 
when what I believe was the real rate of inflation began to substantially exceed the yield available on U.S. dollar-denominated instruments at the same time that the risk associated with those instruments increased. I note that in the period 1967 to 1972, the circumstance was the same and the market didn't care. But after five years when the market did care, it cared in earnest. Now, as a follow-on with regards to manipulation, all markets are manipulated in the near term, gold being no exception. Markets as big as the LIBOR market uh, and the U.S. Treasury market are manipulated in the very near term. And they are always manipulated in the direction that it is the easiest for the manipulators to manipulate. Uh, when gold markets begin to rise, it will be easier to manipulate those markets up, which occurred in my memory in the 1970s. For the last 40 years, the easy way to manipulate them is down. Uh, when you have a market, and I think we've talked about this before, Dunnigan, where the futures market is so much larger than the physical market, the temptation to short-term manipulation is particularly intense. Uh, it is not uncommon for the silver futures markets to trade 200 times the volume of silver available for good delivery in a day. <laughs> so uh, a manipulator could establish a short ladder if he or she expected the silver price to be more likely to decline, a short ladder involving a billion or a billion and a half dollars uh, in stages from three months out to two years, uh, and then borrow a fair amount of physical, which they dumped in the overnight market when the volumes were the least and where the damage they could do was the most, uh, and then enjoy the change that they had affected in the spot market and its outsize impact in the futures market. Uh, and, and I think that happens probably on a quarterly basis. There's no other explanation for very large selling of gold and silver in the overnight markets when the volumes are the skinniest. Uh, a rational seller would be trying to maximize his or her yield on sale. In this particular instance, Whoever the seller is, is trying to maximize their impact in the futures market. I would suggest that this is not the trilateral commission or the international Jewish conspiracy or the Fed. I would suspect that these are organized cabals around the trading desks of major international banks, the same people who manipulated the treasury market. What do you think of Rick Rule's take? Will silver rally continue and will we make new all-time highs in 2024? Post it in the comments section down below your price prediction for gold and silver. Subscribe if you have not yet done so and watch this video right here because you'll love it. I see you on the other side.